Uh, it's Matt Garrett here. Just doing an update video on a car I've been working on for a bit. Tune port injection, 88 Corvette, supercharged car that I've owned for many years. Anyway, uh, watch some of the other videos of reconfiguring the motor on this thing because it had a, a blown head gasket. And so here is the almost ready to go back into the uh, chassis uh, motor. And you can see some of the things that we've done to it. This is a ZZ3 GM engine that I've had for many years. It's not a factory motor, but it's, it's close to the similar factory motor. In fact, the heads are the same as the L98 aluminum heads that are on this thing. Uh, it was brought to life with hyper-eutectic pistons when GM built it, and those failed. And then we put blower pistons in it. And uh, I wasn't very happy with the performance, and it ended up blowing a head gasket. And... Uh, after many, many years of running. And now we uh, put some JE pistons in it and I had it really, really balanced uh, by a, a good machine shop and everything was went through on the bottom end. So the bottom end is really just a, for better part of it, a race motor now. It's, it's, you know, the ZZ3 has the uh, the good rods, the four bolt, the, uh, the good crank and everything on there. So, uh, but some of the additions to the motor obviously are the 1.5 roller rockers and these are the the zz3 springs are going to be different than your l98 of course you've got the guide plate motors and one of the things that i put on this is a new old stock uh edelbrock uh, high flow tpi intake now i've run these before different types some tpis things some slp stuff and things like that in fact, one of my faster cars is an 88, or excuse me, 89 Callaway twin turbo that I have a very well done extrude honed lower base factory one on it and some big runners and things like that. But this is gonna be uh, that'll rock high flow stuff. So I was able to find a new old stock set of these, which are very hard to come by these days in any kind of shape. So that's what we're gonna run on it. And of course I've run a factory plenum that's been ported to match these for for a while back i haven't done anything to the runners i know you know there's probably a to extrude home these things would be really the best thing to do i wouldn't say these are the best runners in the world but they were available for uh for me because everything else tpi is hard to find anything performance oriented these days and so uh that's just what i'm going to use on this and we said it has a paxton supercharger has had it for for since 1989 and it's an SN93 blower on it now and uh, makes a mild you know oh maybe eight pounds of boost somewhere in that range and nothing radical at all this is you know if, if I'm if I get lucky to turn in 475 horsepower at the end of that crank then I'm doing real well so uh, but you know, it's a lot, a lot of stuff to do that in the TPI. It take, takes quite a bit. It's a complicated motor. Very hard to deal with, very hard to work on. You know, just I'm missing a poly lock. Ever seen one of these break? I'm going to tighten that thing down. I hear this crunching noise. I'm barely even turning it and it broke. So I don't know if that one was defective. And I'm thinking that this one was starting to have a crack too. But anyway, I got another set of those orders. So that's kind of held me back a little bit. I wanted to do a... To adjust all these out before I put it in the car, but you cannot put this in the car with the runners on it because you got to put all the injector wiring and everything that goes under the plenum first. And you cannot put this thing really in the car with the valve covers on it because you have to be able to access the bolts to the big tube TPI, which the valve cover has to be off to get to it. So really, and it's very difficult to put the car in with the manifolds on the car or headers or whatever you're going to put on your car. So that's kind of the way it's going to go in. And one of the other things that you have to watch out for on these TPI cars in a Corvette chassis, when you put the motor in, is you're dealing with this front pulley. And this long bolt that holds it in there sticks out about this far when it comes out. And if you try to take that out, it will hit the cross member of the car. So it has to be... You have to drop this in the car, set it up on the transmission, pop this out, bolt all this on, and then drop it down in place. It's really the only easy way to do it. It's, it's a real pain in the butt. A lot of people knock this center piece out and put a smaller washer on there to make the three bolts hold it. And that's really the right thing to do. But I don't do it because this 
also drives a blower, so I need as much stuff to hold that also. So that's one of the, the other things. Of course, I'm gonna haven't done it yet. I have to paint this front part of the motor, re-black that thing with some uh, motor black on that, but that's kind of where it's at. And uh, the whole failure of this motor to, to come apart is the motor didn't fail, nothing failed in the motor. It was the head gasket that blew between three and five. And uh, it's a common deal that happens with small blocks. And I'm attributing this more to the uh, fact that it looked like the head bolts was, because these head bolts all go into the water jackets right here. This one did. And I think what happened is water seeped up over the years and caused corrosion to weaken the head gasket right there. There's nothing to do with the engine itself. You can kind of see the same thing that happened here. So, of course, disassembly of the motor, those things all have uh, PTFE thread stuff on them. And we really overdid that part of it to make sure that none of these bolts would seat back and they're all ARP bolts that are on it now. So hopefully that helps. Uh, ran in a set of Cometic head gaskets on it too. I can't remember the model number, but you can kind of tell if it's the uh, multi-layer steel stuff there. But that is a tune port injection motor, which is a little bit more than stock because it's, you know, it's an EZ3 motor, hydraulic roller cam, a little bit bigger camshaft in it, which is the ZZ3. It's like a 540 lift cam. Um, the roller rockers, obviously, and the big port TPI. And then, of course, I'll show you the rest of the thing here. That's the, the old run, the stock intake off of that car. So you can see the difference in size of the big tube uh, runners. The big, big thing is down in them. So that's really hard to see, but this really is bigger on the on these here and they really want opened up ah, not a good lighting i should have got a flashlight for it but this is there's other videos people show you the difference in these and this is definitely an improvement uh, and i think the past you know some of the cars that i've run on these tpi motors with any kind of uh, uh, uh boost whether it's turbo on the callaways or supercharged like this one these motors with the big tube runners on a th on a 5.7 will run up to, you know, 5,800 RPMs is probably kind of your peak. So you're not looking at a 7,000 RPM, you know, small block or a Zinger or even an LS motor that can turn that. But what this motor makes more than any of those motors do with this configuration is torque. And uh, I would imagine this thing is gonna be producing somewhere in the upper fives in torque. And that's what these these big tube TPIs do. When the blower on it, it really comes to life. Uh, just as a reference, the Callaway Twin Turbo running about 18 pounds of boost with a big tube runner set up is about a thousandth of pounds of torque to the ground. It's just, it's a lot. Not a lot of horsepower. You're in a 600 horsepower range, but damn near double on, on torque. They're crazy. So that's where these motors run on torque. And if you learn how to... Uh, to, to utilize that torque and, and keep the gearing right and drive the car right in, this, in that RPM range is they are very fast. This, this, this has always been a very fast car for many, many years. And anyway, so that's the engine bay where the engine obviously goes. And right here, of course, is where that harmonic balancer and crank pulley end up being an interference when you try and have to work on it after the fact. So it's best if you drop that engine in, uh, Obviously, this is a manual transmission car. You can see it's a 4 plus 3 with, a, with an SK overdrive on the back of it. Um, that's where it hits. So, always one of the factors you have to do that. But all that's together there. That's what it looks like. And looks like a mess right now, but it's not. All this, you know, is your injector wiring, and that all comes down. That's why I said some of this stuff has to go into that, uh, under that plenum. And it's just... You can't really put the stuff together until you put the car in the, and assemble it one piece at a time. It's crazy. Now you can snake those wires under the, the under the intake and things like that, but it's really easier just to do it in the car. So as many times as I've done motors on these, I'm best to just put the put them in this way. So and then assemble everything in the car. And if you use these big tube runners, it's a couple things you have to watch out for the bolts 
all the lower bolts have to be different. And that'll rock. I was lucky to get the kit with the bolts with it. And otherwise you're gonna have to go because you cannot use the factory ones down here. For one thing, if you use try and use the Torx heads with these versus these Allen heads, the Torx heads, they'll hit in some of these big two places like this, so you can't even get them in there. And if you try and shove them in there and tighten them up, you'll actually bust the ears off of these things. So be very careful not to do that. So you utilize these bolts, or if you buy these runners used somewhere, make sure you get a set of bolts that go through it. And you kind of have to go back and just kind of play around with it and see what works for you and make sure that uh, you get them that don't stick out too far because you can bottom out in those holes inside of this uh, intake. So if you bottom out these holes, I've heard people bust them into the water jackets and then the next thing you know, you're leaking water into things like that. So just so many factors you have to watch out for these things. Uh, one of the other things I'm doing on this application is I've always ran the EGR on this car. I don't know why. It's not that I, that I, that I, that I want it or like it, but this time I'm blocking it off. And if you block it off on the Corvette, uh, keep everything in place, including the exhaust. Let me show you guys that. Uh, let's see here. Exhaust manifolds. Yeah, so you have the EGR that comes up. A lot of people cut this thing off, and I don't blame them. And then there's the other pipe, which goes... Now, where we got that thing? It may be over there. There's the uh, uh, the ported uh, intake right there, plenum, and so you see that. And these are uh, actually 38 pound injectors. The or 36 pound injectors. These are actually for 4.3 um, cyclones, and uh, there's eight of those. And those will oh, they they work good variants if you have a uh, FMU to uh, change the uh, the fuel pressure on them. So that's kind of what we run on this. It has run for a while. It runs fair that way. I don't know if it's optimal. It's certainly, uh, it's all mechanical. So there's nothing uh, computerized running any of that. But back to the EGR piece, which has a sensor on it that comes up from the manifold to here. If you keep that EGR sensor in place and then you block the, the, the exhaust from going into the intake, it won't affect the computer. So the, as long as that sensor is getting the heat there, it'll it'll run. So the, none of the EGR, none of the heat will be going through the intake from the EGR, which is a good thing for, especially in a blower application. Um, the other thing too is this car is a ninth injector car. Um, it's '88 and '89. They did away with a ninth injector, which is on the you know part of the back of the fuel rail. It comes around and the ninth injector goes into this. And the block off on that is going to be on this runner on this side. So that's a block off piece. I had to grind it down to make sure it fit in there right. And that will eliminate the ninth injector. And then of course on the back of your, um, your fuel rails where the ninth injector hooks up, you'll have to plug that off. So this is, here's the ninth injector. This is, this is sitting upside down right now, but that's the, the ninth injector coming out which is on the driver's side. Uh, so basically what runs that ninth injector is not the computer. It's kind of an interesting system that I've just kind of now fully understand after all these years. It basically turns on when it's cold from this particular sensor right here on the intake. That's it. Not that one. It's temperature fan stuff there. This is for the ninth injector. And if you look at an 89 and later 1991 TPI, they don't have this, it's missing, it doesn't even have it. So that turns the ninth injector on when it's cold. Once it starts up, it shuts down after a while. But if you remove all of this stuff, or at least I'm removing the ninth injector on this car just for simplicity, because it's so hard to feed that tube under these big runners. Uh, it will, it's a little harder to start when it's really, really cold. Most time it's not, but it won't throw any kind of engine code or you won't have any problem with the computer. So that's one of the things you can get rid of is that ninth injector, just to, to make your car a little cleaner. So those are some of the things that are going back on this car um, that way on this, at least this application. So, you know, TPI, if you wanna, you wanna fight yourself and beat, beat your head against the wall, 
it's a very good way to go, but it's a lot of work. I mean, you can throw an LS motor in one of these cars and make it run really good for a whole lot less money and a whole lot less work. But TPI is cool, and when it's done, this thing is strong and it's supercharged. So, uh, and yeah, that is faster than an LS <laughs> with a supercharger, no worries there. But you can have a supercharger in LS too, and even go faster. But uh, that's the old SN93 Paxton blower there. A little dusty on it there, but so that's uh, I've had that for many years. And that's kind of your your Paxton numbers there. You can see that. Back. So and it's all part of that stuff. But I'll, I'll I'll make other videos as it goes back together. So just kind of doing this uh, for my own documentation and if anybody's interested in seeing it that's kind of how it how it is and yeah sadly i know where every one of these wires goes done this so many times uh, oh the other thing you can get rid of too and that's what's going on and i've ran it for years is i'm getting rid of all of the water the coolant that runs through the throttle body uh, you can put a bigger throttle body on these things, but on the big port injection, I, th I recommend it. But on the supercharged car, all this stuff has to kind of fit because it's all packs and stuff. And that blower forces enough air in there to where you don't really need the bigger throttle body. This thing will work fine. 58 millimeter, I believe. And you can see the old piece there. That was one of the first TPI aftermarket parts that everybody was buying back in the day. Just to put that, that wedge in there to uh, flow the air better. But... I've always, on this particular car, run the water through the throttle body. Uh, don't know why, just because I wanted to kind of keep it as stock as possible, even though it had a supercharger on it. But this time, no, nope, I'm bypassing all of that. No, no, no coolant's going through that. So that's one of the other things you can do to take some of the heat out of your TPI system, block off the EGR and bypass the coolant through that. So that's about as good as you can do to eliminate the heat travel that transfer that goes into that intake to keep it cool so uh, I'm just I'm running a, actually a 160 thermostat in this I believe I've always run a 160 in this particular car even though I think it's better to probably run like a 185 but with the blower on this thing at least it 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 slows down any kind of heat soak it has but it doesn't necessarily stop the terminal heat that it can get but it just slows it down uh, one of the disadvantages of the Corvette is you have to run this, the Corvette Balancer, which is a what 6.5. So you can see this is the gap there. This is really an 8-inch Balancer uh, ZZ3 setup. So it's got a smaller Balancer. You cannot run the bigger one in the Corvette. Uh, all this has been, you know, balanced with this engine, including the flywheel. So um, all good to go there. But what else? That's just about it. So. Hopefully this will all come together and uh, and work well. You know, like I said, I'll do some videos once we get it all in a different stage and do different videos of starting it up and everything, but that's where it's at right now. 88 Corvette, tune port motor. Thanks for watching.